Today on Variant, I give you the history of the Watchmen. Welcome to Variant, where we love comics more than I'm excited about the original red-headed Wally West making his return in DC Rebirth. I'm your host, Eris Quinones. As I'm sure the whole comic book world knows by now, the original Wally West has returned to DC Comics continuity. But that's not the only big thing that DC Rebirth has done thus far. At the end of the first issue, they also revealed that Dr. Manhattan of The Watchmen is responsible for creating the New 52 which blew my freaking mind. And since that was such a huge reveal at the end of DC Universe Rebirth 1, and will obviously play a massive role going forward, I think it's a perfect time to give you all a history of The Watchmen. Starting from the very beginning, Watchmen was a 12-issue maxi-series that first hit comic book stands in September of 1986, and the last issue was published in 1987. This series was written by comic book great Alan Moore and drawn by the amazing Dave Gibbons. A nice little fun fact is that the title of the comic book series takes its name from a popular Latin phrase which roughly translates to, who watches the Watchmen? The characters Dr. Manhattan, Rorschach, the comedian, and so on have become household names in the comic book community. But funny enough, Alan Moore wanted to use characters from MLJ Comics for the series. But luck wasn't on his side and he couldn't obtain the rights. So artist Dave Gibbons said, why don't you use Charlton Comics characters? What he didn't know at the time is that Charlton Comics had recently been bought by DC Comics. And DC Comics was going to add these newly acquired characters into their mainstream continuity. So Moore and Gibbons couldn't use these characters either. This finally led Mr. Moore to create his own characters based directly on several Charlton Comics characters. For those of you who are curious as to which characters he based the Watchmen off of, here's the list. Ozzy Deus is based on Thunderbolt, Night Owl is based on Blue Beetle, The Comedian is based on Peacemaker, Silk Spectre is based off a of Nightshade, Dr. Manhattan is based on Captain Adam, and Rorschach is based on The Question. If you didn't already know that, your comic book trivia game just got a little stronger. As many fans know, Alan Moore is definitely a writer who likes to tackle some pretty adult and real world themes in his writing, and Watchmen is definitely no exception. The original concept for Watchmen was to take a look at what superheroes would be like in a credible real world. As the story became more intricate, more was quoted as saying that the Watchmen became about power and about the idea of the Superman manifest within society. In 1986, Moore said that he was writing Watchmen to be, quote, not anti-Americanism, but anti-Reaganism, end quote. He went on to say, at the moment, a certain part of Reagan's America isn't scared. They think they're invulnerable. Moore was writing about power politics and the worrying times. He said that the reason he set the story in an alternate reality was because he worried that readers would switch off if he attached a leader they admired. So this was his way of going around that. In 1986, he said he was consciously trying to do something that would make people feel uneasy, which is very apparent if you read any of his work. The Killing Joke is my favorite of all his stories, and man does it make you feel uneasy. I can't wait for the animated movie. Movie. But that's my little tangent with that. Now, as for the actual plot of the Watchmen graphic novel or 12 issue maxi series, I'm not going to get into too much detail on that as I'm going to save that for a possible future pull list episode where I break down comic book storylines. But I am going to give you a brief summary. The story takes place in 1985 in an alternate reality where superheroes actually exist, although the only one with actual superpowers is Dr. Manhattan. One day, the comedian, a member of the Watchmen, is murdered. This in turn leads one of his former teammates, Rorschach, to an investigate and find out who brutally murdered him. But during the investigation, Rorschach and the other Watchmen uncover a plot to kill and discredit all present and past superheroes. There's also the Tales of the Black Freighter comic, which is a comic book within the Watchmen universe. It's a comic within a comic. It's basically like the inception of comic books. Obviously, there's a lot more to it with twists and turns and underlining stories, but that's the basic gist. But with that out of the way, let's talk about the Watchmen themselves and who they consist of. I'll start with the comedian, who's the crooked cop of the group. He's a violent psychopath who's committed war crimes such as torture and raping women. Yeah, he's not a nice guy. But he's super smart, highly skilled in combat, and he's an expert marksman. He chose his name The Comedian because he thinks of the world as a big joke. Him and the Joker should hang out. Next up is Silk Spectre 2. She took over for her mother, the first Silk Spectre, and is married to the second Night Owl. She's a good fighter and super smart. Then we have Night Owl 2. He took up the mantle of Night Owl after the first Night Owl retired. He's basically a genius capable of creating technology far beyond his time. He's also a highly skilled fighter. Next on the list is Ozzy Mendeus. He's known as the world's smartest man and is an extraordinary athlete. He wants world peace and of course knows many forms of martial arts. There's also Dr. Manhattan who has as I mentioned earlier, is the only Watchman with superpowers. His powers include teleportation, invulnerability, subsonic telekinesis, 
total control over matter, and the list goes on. He's basically all powerful. And finally, we have my favorite watchman and overall fan favorite, Rorschach. Rorschach is a vigilante who is a highly intelligent detective, great boxer, gymnast, and street brawler. He's also a borderline psychopath, so what I'm saying is, you don't want to mess with him. In addition to the Watchmen, there is also the Minutemen, who were the first superheroes in the 1930s and 40s in the Watchmen universe. The group consisted of Silhouette, Mothman, Hooded Justice, the original Night Owl, Captain Metropolis, Dollar Bill, the Comedian, and Sally Jupiter. As most of you know, right after the launch of DC's New 52 in 2011, DC launched a prequel line to the original Watchmen series. The line had various creative teams telling the stories of the characters' early adventures that took place before the events of the original graphic novel. Which brings me back to what I mentioned at the very beginning of the episode, about Dr. Manhattan being revealed as the one responsible for the creation of the New 52. In the last few pages of DC Rebirth Issue 1, we see that Batman finds a Watchmen pin in his Batcave, and we even get a few pages of a conversation between Dr. Manhattan and Ozymandias. In addition to the comics, we also got a live action movie in 2009. The movie adaptation seems to have a split opinion amongst fans, but I personally loved it. I feel like it's highly underrated, but maybe that's just me. Anyway, all this brings me to reading recommendations, which isn't a very long list since there aren't that many Watchmen comics. You have the original Watchmen series, of course, but I'd also like to recommend the Rorschach, Night Owl, Dr. Manhattan, and Comedian prequels. Did you know in The Amazing Spider-Man Issue 3, Doc Ock called Spider-Man Superman? It's 100% true. I actually didn't even believe it at first when I heard about it. So I signed into my Marvel Unlimited account, pulled up the issue, and lo and behold, it's true. If you have a Marvel Unlimited account, you have to go look this up for yourself right now. It's on page 9 on the bottom right panel. Doc Ock says, And now, Superman, I grow bored of your game. My time is too valuable. I don't know how this mess up got past editorial, especially since Superman is a DC character, but I'm sure glad it did because it's hilarious. First up for Wednesday, June 15th, we have Han Solo Issue 1. Han finally is getting his own comic book series, and in his first issue, he's given a top secret undercover mission for the Rebellion. Here we have Civil War 2 Issue 2. I really like the first issue of this series, so I'm curious to see where it goes from here. It's definitely a Marvel title people will talk about, so I suggest you pick it up. Next we have Justice League Issue 51. This takes place after the Dark Side War. And yes, you're looking at the cover right, that's Lex Luthor with a Superman crest on his chest. And finally, we have Batman Rebirth Issue 1. No one has ever stopped the Cape Crusader, not the Joker, not Two-Face, not even the entire Justice League. But how does Batman confront the new hero who wants to save the city from the Dark Knight? And that'll bring another episode of Variant to a close. But remember, you can always like our Variant Facebook page to keep up with the show and all things comic related. You can also follow Variant on Twitter at Variant Comics or me on Twitter at Eris underscore Quinones. But I'll see you guys next week when I talk about all things comics if you read any of his work. The Killing Joke is my favorite of all his stories, and man, does it make you feel uneasy. And I got a phone call, it's probably the, the people to... <laughs> he far beyond his time. He's also... <laughs>